I, female, 30, have been living with my fiancé, Harry, male, 32, for the last three years. The house is in my name as I make more than Harry, and we decided it would be smart to just have my name on the mortgage. However, I am not controlling and do not consider it to be just my space. I love this man and know that I want to spend my life with him, so I've always taken his input on home layout, furniture, remodels, you name it. Besides, he contributes to utility payments and does a big chunk of chores too. However, I only have one ground rule. I'm not comfortable with people spending the night here while I'm gone. It's just a pet peeve of mine to come home and see stuff moved around or something accidentally broken or groceries used up. Honestly, this has never even been much of an issue between me and my fiancé as I am usually home and only ever leave for business trips once or twice a month. He often calls his friends over to crash when I'm here or we have parties where a mix of people are there and some inevitably stay over. However, here's where things get a bit out of hand for me. Last month, I was supposed to be in Australia for two weeks for a conference, but it got cancelled due to logistical and licensing issues. Of course, I could have just spent time in Australia, but I was missing home and wanted to get back to Harry, so I decided that I would surprise him and show up at the house unannounced. I got back to LAX and got home and excitedly opened the front door. I had come back on a red-eye flight and I knew Harry would be sleeping. I wanted to go to the kitchen and make some breakfast to wake him up, but to my surprise, when I went into the room, I saw one of Harry's friends from college, Linda, already there. My mind immediately went to the worst case scenario and I thought that he had been cheating on me, but Linda's reaction made me second guess that thought. She looked at me over a cup of coffee and smiled. Oh, P, you're back early. I usually never get a chance to meet you when I stop by, but this is a change. How was the conference? I was so dumbstruck. I replied with, ah, uh, it got cancelled, until I shook my head and asked, never mind that, what the frick are you doing here? That's when I got the shock of my life. Linda replied, uh, OP, I've been here loads of times. Harry said it was okay, and I even have an extra set of keys. Hell, it's not just me. I think Carl has a set too. I mean, if you know why. I mean, it should be okay, right? He told us that you were cool with it and often lets us stay. I now realize that every time I was gone, Harry was turning this place into a pad where his buddies could crash, and my fuzzy sentiment of waking up my fiancé with breakfast was gone. The first thing I did was explain to Linda that I had never signed off on this, and she needed to leave while I had it out with him. I mean, she wasn't even the problem and seemed super apologetic and embarrassed once she realized that Harry hadn't told her the full story. After she left, I stormed upstairs and opened the bedroom door to wake up my fiancé. Waking up from his drowsiness, Harry's eyes immediately widened when he saw me, and the first thing he said was, Babe, I can explain. I was really angry at this point, and I told him, I don't care what excuse or explanation you give. You broke a ground rule here. I've kicked your friend out, and he immediately cut me off. You kicked Linda out? Babe, please listen. I need to call her back here. Did she um, tell you why she was here? I was still feeling angry and insecure, and although I knew it wasn't true, I still said something mean by blurting out. How would I know? You never told me, Harry. For all I know, she was here to sleep with you. I could tell that this hurt him a lot, and he kind of clammed up and decided I couldn't be reasoned with. After that, he silently packed his bags and said that he'd go stay with his friends for a little while and we'll speak when things have cooled off. All of that happened this morning and as I sit alone, I kind of wonder, did I overreact? I mean, my biggest problem with people coming over when I'm not here is that they disrupt my space, but I haven't even noticed anything off even though this has happened multiple times before. I don't know the full extent of how many people have spare keys either, but I mean, it's still a clear rule that I put down, which he chose to ignore. And it is still a security issue. I don't think I would have had a huge issue if he'd spoken to me about this first, so honestly, that was quite immature of him. But I'll talk to Harry when I'm a little less angry, but how should I go about it?
WIBTA if this is the hill I die on? Update 1. Harry texted and apologised for leaving so abruptly and said that I would probably understand better if he could speak to me in person and I agreed. He came over yesterday, we had dinner together and then sat down to talk. He said, OP, I understand that you're angry that I broke your rules and that is valid. However, I just wanted you to understand why I made that decision and although that might not fix things, I hope you can understand where I'm coming from. So I found out a few things through Harry's explanation. Firstly, everyone who has been given the keys is kind of going through a rough spot in their lives. To be more precise, Linda has a really bad relationship with her husband right now and sometimes he gets drunk and that scares her by being loud and aggressive. She could go to her other friend's place but that's two hours away and she doesn't have her car. Harry had given her the keys as a way to find safe refuge in moments when she felt unsafe at her own home. If I was at home and something went down, she would go to the other friend's place and whenever I was busy, she would come here if it was needed. I think once she realized that I didn't know anything about her relationship, she felt too embarrassed to explain and just left without conflict. That was also why Harry was angry that I had kicked her out immediately. I felt bad and immediately empathized with Linda. One of my past relationships was very abusive and super tough to get out of. Now that I knew, I was going to try and help her escape the situation. As for Carl, there was also something going on. Carl was Harry's neighbor growing up, and they are best friends. I knew that and had even met him at parties. Carl's housing situation was terrible. He lived in a rent-controlled flat, but his utilities and maintenance were barely kept up to code, and whenever he could find the time, he would come here. Another reason for this was that the town hall and court are quite close to our house, and Carl often goes there looking for job opportunities or trying to get something done about his flat. So, at the end of Harry's explanation, I was less mad. Initially, I thought that he was just screwing around in the house, but it seems that he was doing everything out of the goodness of his heart. I still think that he could have told me, though, and when I asked him, Babe, why didn't you tell me any of this? He told me that he felt insecure about having to ask. I realize now that somehow, some way, I've goofed up in sharing the space equally with my partner. Harry told me that his family and some of his co-workers make fun of him for not owning the house and making less than me, and that created a mental block in his head. We have made up about the conflict, and I guess we'll see how to move forward in the next few days. Update 2. I've decided to change the way we do things at home, and I hope this will help my fiancé feel more comfortable. I told him that it was completely fine to call people over if I'm not over, as long as he tells me and keeps me in the loop. However, I did ask him to take back the spare keys since I find it a little unnecessary since he's usually here when I'm not. He agreed to this, but we reached a little bit of a battleground when it came to apologizing. I think he should call Linda and Carl and tell them that he didn't have any consent to invite them over and also update them on the situation. I know Linda knows already, but it would be best to hear it from Harry too, and then we can move forwards. He feels like this is a little overkill and just makes him look bad. However, I feel like it's the best way to move forward. I think it can be resolved with a bit more communication and everything else is going smoothly. Harry's living with me again and I even reached out to Linda and recommended a great divorce lawyer to her. I opened up to her about my past and we bonded quite a bit. Initially, she was embarrassed about taking up space, but I told her she's welcome to come by any time now. Update 3. Okay, so Harry did call Linda and apologize, and he called Carl and filled him in. Carl laughed at the whole situation and told him that he got off lucky, much to Harry's amusement as well. Linda and I are quite close now, and I think that this experience has just made me realize that Harry deserves to know that he's equal in this setup. On his part, he's realized that he should have probably been a little more proactive with reaching out to me if he felt like a rule I had set needed to be changed, and he's promised to keep that in mind from now on. For everyone who said this was a red flag, I'd have to disagree. I know my man, and he did this out of the love he has for his friends. It's one of the reasons I love him. NAH, I get why you acted aggressively, 
To be honest, I would too. But Harry probably had to deal with a lot of teasing and backhanded comments to be pushed to such a point. I think giving out the keys were his way of staking some kind of autonomy in your shared space. NTA. I think that Harry needs to be a little less finicky about talking to you. I mean, this whole issue seems avoidable. And even if you don't want to admit it, girl, he did create a whole lie against you and his friends. And I suggest you work out these kinks before your fiancé becomes your husband. Next story. I have three children, Amy, 23, female, Ben, 16, male, and Zoe, 11, female. Amy recently moved back in because our house is closer to her new job and she also wanted to be closer to us. Amy brought her dog, Max, with her. Max is about five and a medium-sized spaniel mix for reference. I explained to Amy beforehand that I really didn't want pets because we don't have time for them, especially a dog. But Amy insisted that she would handle everything related to Max. So I allowed her to move in with Max. This dog has been disrupting our entire household since Amy brought it into the house. Max pisses or shits in the house at least every other day. I've caught Amy pretending not to notice the piss shit and trying to wait until someone else cleans it up. Whenever I text Amy that Max pissed shit in the house, she just texts back LMAO and acts as if it's funny. In the middle of the night, usually 3 to 4 a.m., and sometimes in the early morning, 5 to 6 a.m., Max will bark in the hallway outside our bedrooms non-stop until somebody opens their door. Amy would give him treats or play with him whenever he did this, so he still tries it. We've tried moving Max into a crate at night, but he barks non-stop until he's let out, even with a towel covering the crate. Earbuds also don't work. It's affecting all our sleep schedules, especially Zoe, because she has insomnia and struggles to fall back asleep, even with melatonin. She's not getting enough sleep because of Max, and even her teacher reached out to me because it's affecting her focus in class. I've tried explaining this to Amy, and all she'll say is, classic Max always wants a snack to play. Amy usually sleeps over at her boyfriend's house. She rarely experiences this and treats Max's behavior as if it's funny. The last straw is Max's newest behavior, barreling into people so that they fall down, drop their plates, and then Max can eat the food. Amy saw this firsthand and watched Zoe get hurt because of Max. Amy was playful with Max and again treated it as if it was funny. I told Amy that we needed to talk now. I sat down with Amy in a different room and told her that we cannot deal with her dog's behavior anymore and that she needs to either rehole Max in the next few weeks or move out with him. Amy and Max are currently staying with Amy's boyfriend. Now, Amy's aunt, grandmother, and three of her friends have reached out to tell me I was wrong in this situation. They pointed out that Amy has been a great house guest aside from the issues relating to Max. And Amy's had Max since he was a puppy, and it would be unimaginable for her to just give him away. They are saying it's my own fault because I did not, am not willing to train Max more thoroughly to help correct these issues. But that's exactly why I warned Amy in the first place against moving Max in, because I don't have the time to train him. Plus, I don't see how it's reasonable to make the whole house suffer because Amy refuses to correct Max's behavior herself. AITA? Nothing wrong with shaming Amy, a grown-up, for having an untrained dog when there are many, many training options pretty much wherever you are, in the U.S. at least. She's not a tween that you mistakenly thought was ready for the responsibility of a pet and you got her one. She got a dog, didn't train it, and is inflicting the consequences on your family. NTA. Why, oh why, should OP be responsible for training her daughter's dog, especially when her daughter assured her she would handle everything related to the dog? Of course, OP, NTA, stand your ground. Daughter should be ashamed. She is an awful dog owner. NTA, Amy is an incredibly negligent dog owner. I feel so sorry for Max. He's clearly not getting the exercise or the discipline training he so badly needs. But that is your daughter's responsibility, not yours. Next story. 
So basically there is this guy and he smells of sweat really bad. It gets worse from Monday to Friday because the smell intensifies and on Wednesday it's already so bad I want to puke and it makes my head hurt. Now he's been told by people about it. He didn't believe anyone telling him that. One time he brought his t-shirt to another co-worker and asked her if she can smell anything because he can't. That's ridiculous, but whatever. He's been told many, many, many times, and usually when he is told he smells really bad, a week after you can't smell him because he might be putting effort into showering. But it doesn't last long. And at this point, my manager said she doesn't want to make him feel bad enough so he wouldn't leave, since we're short on people. And I am really sorry for him. He's probably super depressed and can't even shower, which happens. He's a good guy, always friendly and never mean or anything, but holy frick, I can't suffer it. Imagine coming to work all happy and ready to start a day and then you're hit with this terrible stench. It always ruins my day instantly. So anyway, whenever he works closer to me, I literally just spray perfume towards him. I don't even try to be subtle about it anymore because I really can't take much of it. And I was told by another co-worker I'm being an a-hole about it. I don't see it really, but maybe I am. Edit. I want to clarify that I do not spray anything on him, but more towards his side. For example, he can be five meters away and I just spray it in the air, but towards where he is. Edit 2. Everyone in my workplace uses some kind of spray just because of him. No one is bothered by it and no one ever complained about that. But people are doing it more subtly whenever he's not watching. I did the same for a long time, but at this point, I'm just done caring about how he feels. I do it whenever I can't bear it anymore, just spray the air towards him. Edit 3. Thanks for everyone taking their time to say something. I took some advice and I ordered some things to help me more than what I was doing before. To all the people trying to insult me, I think you could find a better way to spend your time than that. To all the people that have been helpful, thank you. I learned it's really not nice of me and I will be more open about how I feel and pressure HR to do something about it or I will change my job. Anyway, thanks everyone. ESH. You shouldn't be spraying perfume at him. I mean, just no. He obviously has some hygiene and likely some mental health issues which he needs to address. Dude needs help, not a spray of perfume. Most of all, though, your boss is an A.H. for letting this go on and for not addressing it head on with him. The ostrich management style is bad for everyone. E.S.H. He should shower. Management or H.R. should do something about it. But you are definitely the biggest A.H. Personally, I hate the smell of perfume. It makes me feel ill, way worse than body odor does. You've decided that the rest of the office has to smell your stuff too, and it doesn't stop body odor, so now people are just smelling flowery body odor, which is worse. If you can't stand the smell, put vapor rub or peppermint oil or something under your nose when he walks by. Don't take it upon yourself to stink up the room more. ESH. Spraying perfume in a public place is an AH move, even if you aren't doing it directly at another person. At best, it's similar to listening to music on a speaker in public, basically forcing what should be a person's choice onto everyone else's senses. At worst, perfume is a very common migraine, asthma, or allergy trigger that can cause people active pain. He's obviously also an AH for allowing his smell to become disruptive, and it sucks that other remedies haven't worked. But don't assume your smell isn't disruptive just because yours is perfume rather than BO. Stay tuned for more stories from Our Girl Relationships.